Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Derber with my lovely wife, Alberta Derber, and it's fabulous Friday. We are delighted to be able to share with you in the truths of God's word once again. Luke 1, 37 says, for with God, nothing is impossible. That's good. That's good news. Absolutely nothing is impossible when you're with God. I like to say, with God, nothing happening is impossible. Yeah. I love to say yeah. it that There's way. There's going to be evidence, supernatural yeah. evidence, yeah. miracle yeah. evidence. Okay. Well, uh, we're teaching out of our devotional, Awake to Righteousness, New Creation Realities, and I hope uh, this is being a blessing to you. And uh, before we get started, I want to mention this. Uh, partnership. Uh, God has a, an extended arm of this ministry called TRM, Times of Refreshing Ministry. And uh, in it, uh, partnership is so vital that we can do more together than we can by ourselves. And I don't have time to go into it deep uh, but if you go to trm5000.com, uh, you'll see that website at the bottom of the screen. trm5000, 500, <laughs> com. And uh, look at that website. And if you're interested in uh, knowing about partnership, you contact our office. We'll get this little book. It's an eye opener about partnership that we'll get out to you free of charge. And on that website, there's uh, four messages about what partnership is, where I actually preach here in church to, because the body of Christ don't know about it like they should. But anyways. Well, they don't even want to, you know, they don't even know about tithing, which is partnership. Well, they, a lot of them know about tithing. They just they don't just do don't. it. <laughs> but, but partnership's another ball game. But anyways, just wanted to mention that. You ready to get into this September I, 11th? I am ready. And I, you know, this verse is like one of my favorites. Uh, it's from Ephesians. Ephesians. <laughs> I was going to say the ball. Ephesiastics, whatever that was. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. It says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Stop talking about that old man and thinking about that old man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The old, <clears throat> yeah. I'm not talking about like when we give our testimony. No, no, no. We do it one God. But, you know, how all that things were, oh, it used to be so much fun when we did this. You know, all the Well, all the death talk. I'm afraid so. That, that, my, my, my neck's killing me. That person's a pain in my neck. Well, them yeah. kids gonna be the death of me. All that kind. I used Give to like talk. what people say. I didn't like, I mean, I laugh at what people say. My feet are killing me. My feet are killing me. I see this image of one of your feet jumping up hitting you in the head and you fall over dead. That's stupid. My feet are killing me. <laughs> uh, we better read. Yeah, we better read. The old way of conversation has got to go out of the believer's life. Yes, a born-again believer is going to learn a new foreign language. Well, I wrote, you wrote foreign language. Remember, the Lord just told me that a few months back, mm. that you learned the, the language of faith is a foreign language to us. We learn it's, it's a foreign a, language. It's heavenly you language. You just said it. Mm. Boy, I didn't know you said that. That old way of talking isn't going to work in Father God's kingdom. When I went, this is <laughs> Mr. Philip, when I went into the military, I, I found they spoke another language. They gave me a six-week crash course in it called basic training. I learned that I couldn't talk as I did out on the streets. My flight consisted of several men from different states and culture. But the military didn't care about all that. We were either going to talk their military language or suffer the consequences. You better believe it. Yeah. I learned the military language. I remember when we got there, there was this, there was this guy uh, from New York. And, uh, at, you know, I was raised in a military family. I, yeah, I mean, uh, 
you had to say yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, to your parents. So that was easy for me. <laughs> so when the sergeant, you know, come up and got in my face, I was yes, sir, no, sir, all that. <laughs> this New Yorker. <laughs> sergeant come up to him and said, and he's just saying what he always says, right? Yeah. He said, do you understand me? Yo, man. <laughs> I'm thinking, yo, man. <laughs> he's about to get yo, man. But this is before he learned anything, right? Oh, but you're going to get a crash course. Did you already have your hair cut? It, no. Oh, no, mean, we just got off the off bus. The bus. Oh, that's we not just, fair. And we all high. We've been smoking <laughs> dope at every bus stop because we knew we... <laughs> Yo, man. Right? Oh. And I'm thinking, boy, 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 <laughs> this is going to start out real good. Oh, and, man, he just lit into him. Oh, that's there was not... no more yo, yo, come, man, coming out of him. That's not fair. He just landed there. Oh, my. Not fair. <laughs> okay, let's see where I say. We were either going to talk their military language or suffer the consequences. Well, I was thinking how when I went out to Kwajalein to work, I had to learn military talk time yeah. and uh, abbreviations for everything. You're on a military base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was wild. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. The military's got all these abbreviations. Yeah. Everything. What's your AFSC? Oh, what's that? <laughs> What's your It's CD a 43152. <laughs> that was my... F now, how did I remember that? 43152. That's a, That's your Air Force specialty code. Oh, Lord. Let's get back in here. No, but okay. but see, yeah. if you're around uh, a military folk, if, if, if this was if this uh, studio was full of Air Force people mm -hmm. and, and they said, uh, Philip, what was your AFSC? Four three one five two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now somebody's sitting there like, what is it? What did, what did they just communicate? Oh, well, yeah, right. See? I don't even remember any of them from Mountain College, but praise God, don't need to. <clears throat> Excuse me. All it took were a few suffered consequences and our concentration level <laughs> dramatically increased. We quickly learned the language. The same with faith. Just a few slips. Well, here, here's 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 what they took tell you. <laughs> you're you're sitting there, and they said, "Here's how you you report, sir." Sir. Philip Derber sir. reports as ordered, sir. Sir. Begin and end with sir. Yeah. Hey, Airman, uh, what you doing, sir? Airman Derber reports. As ordered, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm shining my boots, sir. And if wow. you left that out, wow. Oh, um, because every time you 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 go into what was called the brass, the officers. We ain't talking. You ain't even talking about the sergeants. You better had it. You better had it together. See. So, anyways. Well, that's the same way with the language of faith. Yeah. I mean, if you don't get it, you're going to be calling in stuff on yourself that and other people. Well, you, you'd be cursing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your life. Yeah. Because you're you're speaking old man conversation instead of new man conversation. Exactly. Yeah. You won't get anywhere. You after a few suffered consequences. <laughs> yeah. You'll learn the language. If we Christians would take seriously our words and begin to transition our worldly talk, our former conversations, and begin to say what God has said, the negative consequences of speaking incorrectly would cease. That's what we are just saying. Mm -hmm. Father God is not punishing us for speaking incorrectly. We are punishing ourselves. I go to the Marshall Islands to minister every year. I know just enough Marshallese to get by. I could learn more, but I haven't. So I'm limited in what I can do when I'm there. I need someone who speaks both languages to help me. That is the condition of most Christians. That's so true. They know enough of God's language to barely get by. They could learn more, but they don't. 
They have to find someone who speaks both languages. That's really good. Mm -hmm. To help them get what they need. That's really good, what mm -hmm. you just said there. Make up your mind, awake to righteousness, and learn to speak the righteousness language fluently. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, well, you, you need somebody to interpret Scripture yeah. for you. Exactly. And uh, that's why God has people, gifts, to teach. And righteousness language is, it takes faith to speak it. Yeah. You know, because... You're over there sick, your runny nose, runny eyes, coughing, sneezing, somebody said, you know, feel real good. I'm healed. Well, if Just you to speak, try to say it. When you speak righteousness language around so-called Christians, they think you, you talk in a foreign language. You are. <laughs> you, 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 you shouldn't be talking like that. I'd never say I'd that never I'm righteous. Say, right. And that kind of stuff. And so... Uh, as God begins to uh, teach the believer who they are in Christ Jesus, he has to get their mouth yeah. speaking what God say. says. Yeah. What is, but what does God say? Come on. What has God said about me? He mm -hmm. said, I'm a royal priesthood. He said, I'm a king and a priest. He said, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He said that. And for in order for a believer to walk in that, they must say what God right. has said. That's right. And a lot of things what God has said don't line up with our current situation. God, God says that you're victorious and there you owe everybody in town. God says you're the healed and, and, and you have pain in your body, mm -hmm. you know. And you, you start learning. But we're talking about righteousness, new creation, reality. Uh, when the devil, that lying devil, mm, who Jesus. is always trying to resurrect the old, old man. man. Yeah. And so he comes around. The thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. He tries to steal the truth that you and I are born again in the image and likeness of God, we are in truth righteous. He knows that. Mm -hmm. That's why he trans, he, the Bible says that he'll even uh, transfigure himself into an angel yeah, like a minister of righteousness. Why? Because when that truth comes out, he, he tries to get in there and then now take that truth and bend oh, it and twist God. it to where anything goes. See, anytime... Anytime the devil gets involved in something, some revelation, it allows sin. Mm. Jesus. It allows disobedience. Yeah. Yeah. It allows laziness. It allows uh, undisciplinedness, if you allow that word. Undisciplinedness. Just put it in my dictionary. But you understand what I'm getting at. Absolutely. And so this so-called revelation uh, that... Uh, anything goes because I'm righteous, that comes from devil. But when you get over here in God, right? Not anything goes. God God has specific things that he'll say, uh, no, that's, that, that's not for the born again believer. Thank you. And how you and I direct our lives is by the words that we speak. That's right. And I remember, Alberta, I remember when we first started discovering righteousness and the Lord said, and I've shared this on this program before, the Lord said, say it. He said, say that you're righteous. And boy, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I said, I'm righteous, real low, right? He said, what was that? Because you say, always heard. Uh, oh, I, I, was, I, I was afraid yeah. to say I'm righteous because yeah. of all the wrong teaching yeah. I had heard, but yet I'm reading the Bible mm -hmm. that says I am. Righteous. But yet, even though I'm reading the yeah. Bible, I still have this old yeah. religious concept that there's none righteous, no, not one. And God is saying, 
for you to walk in this, you're going to have to say it. Mm -hmm. And and so I muttered it out, you know, real low, I'm righteous. And he said, what was that? <laughs> say it. And well, I, I picked up up the volume a little bit. I'm righteous. He said, well, what do you got? got? And finally I got mad. I'm righteous. Right? And boy, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, is a, is a lightning bolt going to come out of the sky, you know, for saying something like that? Yeah. See, it takes it takes faith. Yeah. But then when he got to where, and, and he's nursing me along, when he gets to that place where, say you're as righteous as Jesus. Oh, no way. <laughs> nope. I'm listening to the devil. Nope. <laughs> you ain't going to get me to say that. I don't care who you are. Ooh. And he took me that scripture. I got to read it again. Because God's word, God's word. If, it, if God said it, mm -hmm. then it's, 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 it, it, it's, 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 it's a done settled. deal. First yeah. John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he, he is, is, so are we. It not is. so will we be. Uh -uh. So are. So are we. In this world. In this world. And I said, okay, here we go. All right, we're going to do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's going off the high dive back in the day. Yeah. I don't have no oh, problem yeah. now. Yeah. But back in the day, I said, okay. Oh, God, we were I'm right. Shy. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Come on, Philip. <laughs> I'm the I'm I'm righteous. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Say it. Say it. <coughs> I am as righteous as Jesus. And nothing came crashing down, did it? No, no lightning bolt. No lightning bolt came. Now I'll tell you what did come. The devil. Look at what you're saying. <laughs> You're trying to say you're as righteous as Jesus. Well, let me ask you. See, God, God started doing this. When God created Adam in the garden, Shh. was he as righteous as God? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And w the devil hated it and had to try to steal that righteous divine nature and did. And he did. He pulled it off. But the last Adam. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Jesus came on the scene. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. And he became sin. That if we would receive the gift mm -hmm. of righteousness, we'd reign in life. And boy, I tell you, the, the enemy has no artillery. Mm -hmm. He has no... Uh, that's why you, we, we have the breastplate of righteousness. What's, what's it do? It, it, it protects, no, watch this. it protects all the vital organs. You, you, somebody can have their leg cut off and they live. Oh, yeah. Arm cut off. See, but when you get in this area, see, now what, what is in this area in your spirit, man? It's your love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. This is the fruits of your righteousness, your spiritual organs, and your breastplate protects that. See? So when the enemy comes in, you know, with his fiery darts, we have the shield of faith. And that's an all-the-time thing. All the, yeah, all the yeah. That's his job, and that's, all he, that's what he's good well, at. Well, he, he's a liar. He Father. was a murderer. From the beginning. All right. Who did he murder? He murdered. Watch this. He, he murdered before Cain. Yeah. Murdered Abel. Yeah. He murdered Adam. Adam. Adam and then he, he thought he was murdering He murdered Jesus. his divine nature. And God had forewarned Adam. In the day that you eat of that tree, thou shalt surely die. And we know that Adam did not physically die mm. in that moment of time. He did not. He lived hundreds of years after that, but he died spiritually. 
And spiritual death didn't mean his spirit dropped over dead no. and didn't exist. <laughs> no. He was separated from God. And it would take all the way through those thousands upon thousands upon thousands yes. of years of Old Testament saints My God. before Jesus would come on the scene and become sin to bring mankind back into their righteous state wow. so that they could commune God. with God as sons and daughters God. like God's original plan you, was. And we have to learn to speak. Speak it out. That's it. That's it. So put that camera on me, Eric. Say it right now. Right now, those of you listening. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say that with me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. One more time. I am the righteousness of God in Christ in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Now we're going to take it up another level. Uh oh. Here we go. I am as righteous Ooh. as Jesus. Uh oh. And see, taking faith. Come on. Say it now. I, I am, am as righteous, righteous as, as Je Christ. Oh, Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> One more time. Say Christ. I, I am as righteous as Jesus. Jesus. See, it takes faith to do that. It keeps reminding me, what I keep thinking about is uh, that story, a true story. I think Brother Copeland told it years ago about that man that was in the Baptist church. Mm -hmm. He was an alcoholic mm -hmm. beating his wife and mm -hmm. what he was an elder or something in the deacon, church, I think. a deacon in the church, Baptist church. And they all just loved him. They all knew. What was going that, on? They all knew that he was an alcoholic, a very bad alcoholic, and beating his wife. Mm -hmm. And uh, through Brother Copeland's ministry, he found out that he got a hold, I don't know how, maybe TV, I don't know, a book, I don't know, found out that he was the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and went back to his church and told them, I'm the righteousness of God. After Christ. he got his life right. Yeah, after, uh, yes, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, I guess, like, you know, mm -hmm. and they they threw him out of the church. Sure. Sure. You could be an alcoholic beating your wife or whatever. It's okay. But don't say you're the righteousness. Don't find out. But don't say you're the righteousness of God mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, this truth of righteousness, Alberta, uh, the Bible says in uh, Romans chapter 9, as we close here, close out this week, uh, God is going to have a righteousness revival. I mean, he, he, I prophesied it years ago. Romans 9, 28, for he, God, will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. So God is going to uh, raise up this righteousness revelation mm -hmm. because righteousness assists your faith. Absolutely. And uh, especially in the area of, of uh, the two main areas of prosperity and health. Mm -hmm. When you understand uh, that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And when you really understand it, that it's not an excuse. Oh no! It is a position. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is a so good. It is a nature, mm -hmm. and when when you understand that natured position, mm -hmm. then uh, and you're living in a world that categorizes you. Oh, you just that crazy Holy Ghost, whatever or whatever, or they still look at you like. Uh, you know, as a sinner, yeah, you know, and yeah. or that you're in some false doctrine or you're in some cult. We're reading the Bible, and there's going, there's coming an awakening. <laughs> they don't know the Bible. There's coming an awakening to the body of Christ. Yes, absolutely. To the body of Christ. Yes, that uh, they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you know, there, I. I I believe that there are people that have been watching us for days and weeks now 
that they're starting to understand this new creation reality, but but to to walk in it, you have to say it. You have to Just say like it. getting born again, you yeah. said something. Yeah, and if you think Jesus that you asking the Lord to come into your heart, that in that moment of time, your sin was forgiven, you escaped hell, <laughs> and now you're going to heaven. If you believe that, which is which it's is true, true yes. then why are you having a problem with your new creation reality? The reason is it sounds foreign. It's a foreign language. Well, our time's gotten away from you. It's wow. been a good week. Another one. Yeah, enjoy your weekend, get in church, and uh, we'll see you again Monday. Uh, and we're going to have us a fabulous Friday. Have a fabulous Friday the rest of the day. Our prayer line is there for you. 502 597 4357. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4 says, Where the word of a king is, there, there is power. power. Be a blessing. Awake to Righteousness with a daily devotional by Drs. Philip and Alberta Derber. In this powerful devotional, you'll learn the different aspects of the righteousness or right standing that Jesus has provided. Get the reality of what Jesus has done deep down inside of you to the point that every day you awake to righteousness. Awake to Righteousness includes 365 daily devotions accompanied by a master key verse and a scriptural meditation for every day of the year. Get your Awake to Righteousness devotional today. You can order online at our website or give us a call at 502-875-7886.